yogis, welcome to Yoga Chats, the podcast where we keep it real about all things yoga. I'm your host, Greg Walsh, and I'm delighted that you're tuning in for some enlightening yet lighthearted chats. Yoga Chats is all about down-to-earth conversations with experienced yogis, instructors, even just interesting people who found their zen in unexpected places. And this week's Yoga Chats guest is Jeanette Keane, who teaches calm and flow yoga sessions in Temple Bar Yoga. Jeanette is an artist a professional dancer, she is skilled in public relations, digital communication, marketing and arts administration and needless to say is a highly skilled yoga teacher. Thanks for tuning in and now let's have the yoga chats. Jeanette, thank you so much for joining Yoga Chats. We've been talking about having a Yoga Chats chat together for quite a while now and uh, so I'm really delighted to uh, finally get to sit down and have a chat with you. Thanks, Greg. It's great to chat with you. And can you tell me, just for our our listeners, mm-hmm. um, who is Jeanette Keane? <laughs> who is Jeanette? That's a good. <laughs> that's a very heavy question, Greg. Mm-hmm. We're getting right into the existential thinking right mm-hmm. away, aren't we? Conversations. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'll I'll take it from a. a another angle of uh, where I'm from. <laughs> so well, go on. Yes, yeah, start at the start. <laughs> so at the... I'm from Toronto. And I moved over here, uh, we say quote unquote, a little while ago, and I moved down to Cork. And from there, I was there for a year and a half and I moved up to Dublin. And that's then where I found Samadhi, but it wasn't called Samadhi at the time. Is that Prana Yoga Studio? It was Prana Yoga Studio above Odessa. Yeah. Which is no longer there either. Neither of them is no longer there. So, um, yes. And just to put it in time, mm-hmm. in a time frame, uh, Prana Yoga Studio closed in 2005. So that is 18 years ago. Yes. So it was around <laughs> that time that I started and then stopped with you. <laughs> and then um, life got pretty busy. So I just maintained my own practice there for a little while. And you're moving around. And I had a couple of babies. And then I was coming in and out. Then when you moved into Temple Bar and opened Samani. And I didn't practice with you much no. because um, of the time of day. I'd practice either late after I'd be finished teaching a ballet class and I'd come in to studio around eight or quarter to eight, practice then. Or I'd come in very early on a Saturday morning. You had the 8.30 morning classes. Yes, yes. Or yeah, I wouldn't even do... Um, no, not even the 10 o'clock because it was too late. So I had, yeah, it worked out family-wise a lot better than that. Um, and then I was getting into some of your classes. Some of when you'd be doing workshops, I would be coming into some of those. Um, yeah, and I was probably practicing still quite a bit on my own. And um, yeah, it was just always there, the practice. Um, and then... Yeah, just the practice developed more and more and more over time. And yeah, the value anytime. of it, the relevance of it became mm-hmm. more important as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I used to see you, your practice was always, yeah, you looked like you were practicing a lot, which was always lovely to lovely to see. Yeah, I think it's always kind of the investigation of it and what the how it feels in one's body because it's different for everyone. As we have had many discussions on different, <laughs> on different asanas and how... Yes. Yes. You know, yes. and that and that's good though. And I think the more um you spend time with the practice and investigating and, and seeing how it is in your body and what it means to you, then you own it a lot more and you understand it and uh you can work deeper into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. And that only works if you are coming coming to it very regularly, I find, doesn't it? You do. You have to yeah. put the time into it. And yeah. I think having a teacher that, uh, teacher is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Teacher that works for you, that understands you, but also that you relate to the teacher as well. Yeah. And I think today um, it's wonderful that yoga is so accessible. There's a lot of uh, teachers out there, which is great. A lot of different options. And I think the, the big thing is um, finding a teacher that works for you. Mm-hmm. And who understands perhaps you, your body, or you understand them. You know, we all communicate in different ways. And finding that connection is really important. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah, yeah. How did you manage so when you were mostly practicing on your own? Was it enough to go to an occasional workshop? Mm, it had to be because of my family commitments yeah. with the girls being young. Um, like when I had Molly, Molly's now 10. And sometimes, not sometimes, every day I at least do say 10 minutes in the morning because I had to do it. Yeah. And even if the kids are, <laughs> yeah. there's a bit of chaos. I'm like, I just need to do this. I just need this bit of time. I'm a big believer in, in as you said, a bit of time, mm-hmm. but regularity. You know, regularity over intensity. Like, it's lovely to go to a workshop now and again, but a workshop, two, three hours, you're not going to do that every day. But if you do something every day, it's what you do every day that really yeah. makes the difference, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's the, like you're saying, yeah, that consistency because then you feel it in the body mm-hmm. and you're not trying to f- find it, but it's there and you can connect to it more. Um, I think though as well, and after I had Molly, because I was kind of desperate for the practice, I I was definitely, uh, you'll know this, definitely dropping into my joints a lot mm-hmm. and just cranking everything to everything because I needed to get through everything yes yes. and I I didn't injure myself but I think um I could have taken a bit of time but I was so uh desperate to to do it and get through as much as possible and uh yeah I kind of looked back on that time and I was like okay well I did what I could (laughs) You yeah, know? yeah. No, that was just a really challenging time, of course. Yeah. And you did what you could and you, you came out of it and you came out of it still with both your yoga practice, but also almost as importantly, your sanity. Yeah. And, you know, that's um, just thinking there about um, when you have children and what happens to one's body as well. Or any time you go through something, if someone goes through an accident. And I think what happens is... Uh, the before and after are two different things in terms of the body. So you remember how it felt before and you go back into it. You're like, oh, it's not like that again. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And that's where patience really comes into play. And the whole thing, you know, but accepting where you are in this moment in time and being okay with that. Totally easier said than done, but hand on heart. I've totally been there because I had real um, lower back problems and plus, when I wore both girls, my tummy and my back, I wore Molly for a really long time on my back. And that definitely did damage, yeah. but I still feel it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was for her and she loved it and it was fine and you just get on with it. But then you need to care for yourself in a different way and approach things in a different way. And my back bends definitely, um, I need to work on them a lot to get them back again. Mm-hmm. Did you get them back? Not that uh, we're goal orientated. No, 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 no. But I did though. And But it was the consistency and it was a real um, lesson for myself around not giving up, but around working through it. And I'd say the back bends are probably stronger than they were before because I'm more informed because of what I needed to go through to get to them. That's so Because it wasn't just about the mobility, but getting the strength and accessing and feeling the back in a different way, feeling the shoulder blades in a different way, you know, that lifting up of the chest, the length, the using the, the, um, as I press onto my legs here, your, your hip flexors, all of this really feeling that grounding down to the floor, the opening of the chest, you know, just, it was better actually. Yeah. 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 I can, I can hear what you're talking about. It sounds like you're, you're, uh, you, it awakened a new intelligence in your practice. Mm, absolutely. <clears throat> when you're 25, you can, or 30 or whatever, you can just, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you can just lean into your joints and you can push yourself hard, but you have to push yourself smart as mm. uh, time goes on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that yoga, you know, I'm so glad that I discovered it and I find, you know, I've had ups and downs, but it has been such a great companion through so many years. But not everything suits everyone and no. some things need to be modified and everything really, oh, as yeah. you get older, needs to be uh, approached with an intelligence or things that yeah. may have served you well in the past could bite you in the tail. 
uh, going yeah. forward. And we're all different proportions as well. Mm. And I think that's a big piece as well to remember as well. We all have different arm lengths, leg lengths. So what's going to look right or look on one person is going to look on something different else. What's going to feel on one person is going to feel something different else on someone else. And yeah. all of that. Yeah, so we're not trying to create the calendar version of the yoga no. pose. Because for many years, you know, the style of yoga that I trained in is very focused on um, creating a certain look. But you're absolutely mm. right. Like yoga... You know, we it's the nature of it that we assess it uh, visually and externally and all mm. of that. But you're absolutely right. We're, now, I think we can let ourselves off the hook with this at the same time, which I'm not a mm. massive fan of. But we are slightly different. You know, the ball and the socket of the hip joint might be Oh, my gosh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But Huge. I've had some people say to me, oh, yeah, because of the shape of my hips, I just can't do that. But I think, well... What could we take? Like, what is a pose? Is a pose a shape, or is a pose a um, a series or a gathering of actions and inactions, mm. extensions and contractions, openings Absolutely. and closings? Yeah, and, opposition and forces within mm, the body, mm. and so it's the dynamic that's happening within. Yeah, like I always feel like the practice comes deep within, yeah. and then it comes out. You know, it starts on the inside. Yeah, deep within, you're rotating, you're moving, and then the end expression is what you see on the outside. Yeah, yeah. But it's all about that work and getting into the pose as well is mm. so important as being in it because the way you set yourself up yeah. informs then what's happening once you're in it. Yeah, there's the, there's the preparation, there's the entry into, there's the doing of it, and then there's the exit as well, which is yes. apparently <laughs> when most people injure themselves because they go into the pose so carefully, they're in the pose beautifully, and then they just drop. <laughs> so tell me Jeanette uh, you're now teaching yoga and you've been teaching yoga for a while do you want to tell me about you know we've we've chatted about your uh, your years um, practicing and practicing through being a mum and all of that but when mm. did you start teaching and what is your your approach to teaching um so I started teaching yoga probably about three years ago but I'd say the teaching for me teaching of the body stems or goes f way further back from that because I've been teaching ballet for a very very long time to adults and uh, I teach adults um, a lot of adult beginners I teach advanced and intermediate classes as well not so much teaching over the last few months because the yoga has taken mm -hmm. over um, but, um, that has given me a very, very solid, um, understanding of, um, my approach to teaching or the way that I teach, but also of the body at different stages and then me as well, being able to look at a body <laughs> and help a body as well. And the one thing that I really, really love is when adults comes to a class because they want to be there. Not that children don't. But there's a time that a child might or might not want to because they're, maybe their parents are bringing them. But any time an adult's coming to the class, they want to be there. They're there to learn, to be part of everything. And they're there because they want to take on what the practice is. Mm -hmm. And I love looking at bodies. I love looking at people move. And, you know, not that we want to fix anything in people, but we want to enhance what they're doing. We want to give them a greater understanding of their body within the movements that they're doing. Yeah, it's about empowering people, and, isn't it? It's about giving them something oh, it is. for themselves. Yes. And I think it's wonderful as well when I can see where a person is going to be in a couple of months, a few months from now, but they don't quite know within themselves the strength of the flexibility, the mobility that they have, because they can't quite access it yet. They can't quite make that brain muscle connection yet, but you just know that they're going to. And it's wonderful when you see that light bulb moment and then their practice, whatever they're doing, it flourishes. Yes. And it's just you can just see the lightness in them that the understanding and again that empowerment that ownership 
having um, the practice deeply rooted in them is so important. Um, and I guess just in the approach, the practice, I always, you know, and even in the planning of my classes, there's always a through line that I'm thinking of to bring to um, the class, bring to fruition. And uh, you, um, yeah, you're, I know you're quite meticulous in your class planning. Now, speaking of that, a slight, uh, mm. a slight uh, side angle. Uh, in TBY these days, we always have, we have a weekly theme. How mm. are you finding that to work yeah. with? Oh, yeah, I love yeah, it. Um, mm-hmm. Because um, it's great. I don't have to think of a theme. I'm just kidding. Because yeah. um, I always have a theme for each of my classes as well. And, um, yeah, it's just great as well that I know that we're all kind of doing something along the same lines. But at the same time, we're all going to bring something different to the table. Yeah. And uh, I'm aware of, too, of what I might say. Someone else might say completely something else. And at the back of my mind, I'm aware of this as well. But I think that's okay because I will say, if I know I'm saying something maybe a little controversial in a class, I will tend to justify why I've said to approach it this way or thinking of it this way. Yeah. Some people work different ways and, you know, something might work for one person, might not work for somebody else. So at least they have those... Um, Further, further information to inform themselves in their own decision making yeah. on how to approach something or how they're going to work the inner, the inner muscles in their body. Mm-hmm. So even if the outside is this looks the same, maybe they've just adjusted slightly different to be able to feel it more and open up a little more, engage, or, you know, we're saying access that opposition a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. 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 I hear you. And tell me, what for Jeanette? What does the future hold? Where are you going with this? It's a really good question. I'm. I can't say that I'm not sure, but I think it's just um, just working within the practice still some more for my own self. In terms of like, I still feel my practices getting stronger (laughs) within myself. Um, Like, I don't feel like I'm letting any asanas go at all. (laughs) I'm still building on all of them. And uh, it is, I don't feel like within my own practice, there are no uh, limits. Mm. Within the practice in general, I think we're in a very, very interesting time of yoga because uh, yoga is so accessible to so many. There are so many different teachers. Um, are rules being broken? I don't know. What are the rules? What are the rules? The more rules are being made, yeah. there's a lot more uh, kind of different types of yoga. We can go right into this, into like the history of yoga and look at how it was all developed and say, well, is right now any different in a way from when it first started, because everyone was trying to find the right methodology mm-hmm. to teach and practice. And now in so many ways, it's not that much different. But then I guess there's the whole definition of, can you call that yoga? Can you not? But for me, I think as long as within a practice, if they stir the, the breath, mm-hmm. the posture, the energy is coming from the right place. Yeah. Yeah, I think That's, yoga has to be a living practice. It has to, yeah. it will change. When people practice it, they mm-hmm. will discover different nuances. Uh, it's, you yes. know, it needs to, to be s- sustainable. It needs to change in parallel to new scientific discoveries. Mm. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be left as a, yeah. something archaic. Yes, a little bit of a historical piece. And as we understand more about the human body, as we understand more about our own body, and I'm circling a little bit back when you're saying about the practice and about the future, I think um, kind of the deeper we go into our own practice and the more than um, greater, obviously we're informed and even in our teaching as well, we have greater ability to to bring the practice out in other people as well we have more uh the the spectrum is wider in which to work from if that makes sense 
Yes. Yeah, the deeper more you understand the practice, the more you've explored. It could be something very simple. I'm not saying advanced postures or anything like this, but anything. And the more the practice is rooted within one, the more you can share. Yeah. And with regard to advance, I think you can you can go further or you can dig deeper. You can do yes, both, I can, but you don't need to. Yes, I agree. That's so. Yeah, and that's what I'd be. You know, what is an advanced practice? Yeah. Sometimes an advanced practice can be one. Yeah, asana, but two, it can be very deep in your pranayama practice as well. You know, deeply rooted within the breath work, deeply rooted within the the way you approach an asana you know you have a greater understanding of it and that's an advanced practice right yeah. there you're very into the pranayama aspect of the practice yes and you know i always um we always do pranayama my 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 classes or the the practices mm-hmm. that i lead mm-hmm. um I feel it's really important and listen sometimes we go we do a little bit more sometimes we only do one breathwork exercise and then let it be and we go into shavasana so sometimes it's a bit lighter mm-hmm. than other times but um i if i yeah i do feel that it um people are are benefiting from it yeah i think i think pranayama they feel is, it they, they, feel they it. really do yeah I, not everyone likes it but yeah i keep doing it anyway because i, I think mm. it's so it's so useful and i think it is um it's very potent. I think a little bit of pranayama, it's it triple distilled. You know, it's um, it's stronger mm-hmm. than than your your asana practice in a way. But you need the asana practice it, it, to be ready for it. Yes, you do, and that's what I think. You know, um, absolutely. And I often say how the stillness is the hardest part of the yeah. practice. We want to go all the time and then to quiet the mind, quiet the body, and just to be present and still Yeah, yeah. is very hard. Well, the yoga sutras define that as yoga. Yoga is the, the yes. stopping of the fluctuations of the mind. And uh, so exactly. pranayama does that so quickly. That's it. And the deeper then we're still, the more open not just that we we do the practice of the the asana the physical practice to open the body and then the pranayama and meditation then opens the mind and you know it's it's okay it's good it is, it is good and Jeanette on that yeah. note I'm going to say thank you so much for having the yoga chat pleasure thank and you Greg. I think we should do it again soon sounds good have a great day you too see, see you soon, soon. Thanks for tuning in to Yoga Chats. And remember to subscribe to Yoga Chats on your favorite podcast platform. And why don't you share it? Why don't you comment on it? Why don't you give us a super review? And please do come back for more chats soon. I'm Greg Walsh, and I'll see you on the mat.